Greetings Kerbal Noughts and welcome to a little experiment. This is actually a live stream and I've put up VODs of live streams on the channel before but usually it's exported straight from Twitch so it's just the fuzzy 480p which is the most I can stream at. However this time round I tried to record in Bandicam alongside which did pose a few problems but hopefully the end result even though it's not quite 1080, it is still only 720, but uh, hopefully the end result is good enough that it warrants doing this in future. Even just doing it in 720 did have a noticeable effect on frame rate though, so I think trying at 1080, at least with my current setup, would be out of the question. However, that said, you know, 720 is definitely better than 480, and uh, you can see the glorious space tog in all its glorious details, all the better. I'm going to say glorious again because I can. Glorious space talk. There we go. So, hopefully you enjoy this and uh, let me know what you think. So there we go. For the benefit of YouTube, hello everybody. We're going to make a tog fly and uh, hope that it all goes according to plan. So I've been, over the last, like, I don't know, two or three weeks, I've just been chipping away and chipping away and putting in far more hours than I did with the original space tog. But what I have is a craft which is just so much better. It's certainly a lot more accurate than the original Space Tog, but uh, it's it's not that accurate. But it, it kind of looks more like a Tog. I mean, just for reference, this is the original Space Tog with all the gubbins stripped away. Um, yeah, it looks a little bit basic, doesn't it? It's a bit, um, you know, yeah. It's only very, very, very vaguely Tog-shaped. It also only had two engines, didn't have a lot of Delta V, didn't fly very well, even up in space when there's no atmosphere. So I figured, given that there are now better tools available, I would actually have a go at making something a little more like this. So this is more or less the completed TOG, but we still have to get it up into the air. So I'm actually going to retract that and save it retracted, because otherwise I just have to keep closing it all the time. So we're going to, first off, I'll show you this thing as it is now. It can drive around on the ground. That's something the original Space Tog could not do. Uh, so let's get Jeb and Valentina piloting this thing, which is obviously a great honor. In fact, as you can see, it can take a crew of six and we've got uh, a lander can hiding in the turret as well. So we'll just uh, dump in some random um, Volunteers! Yes, they all volunteered. I don't, definitely didn't have to force them at gunpoint or anything like that. Mind you, with the uh, the Kerbal Noughts in KSP, I mean, they all must be a bit interesting psychologically because um, it's not like the, uh, the, uh, the space program has got the best safety record. Now, FPS-wise, this is actually not looking that good. It's probably because I am recording with Bandicam and doing OBS at the same time, but I think it's good enough. So this is the space tog. We're not going to do an engine test just yet. First off, I'm going to show you how it drives around with only the wheels. Doesn't accelerate very quickly, but that is kind of fitting because, you know, it's a tog. So, um, yeah, it can go up to about 12 meters per second. It actually turns pretty well. It goes off road pretty well. The handling is actually uh, pretty nimble, which is maybe uh, somewhat appropriate. Now, these engines, you'll have noted maybe if you if you play KSP, these, these are the vector engines, which have a really big gimbal range, and that did prove to be necessary. They've also got a really good thrust, but they're also quite fuel hungry. So inside the space tog, we've basically got three orange fuel tanks. We've got one central one, which is kind of like the core body and then two that are, are clipped in either side. So it's quite a lot of fuel in this thing. This is why it weighs 170 tons. Now, if I slam on the brakes, which it might, <clears throat> it might take a little while to slow down to a halt here. These engines don't have the best brake speed. Brake speed, brake, brake force, I know what I mean. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're going to probably regret this, but I'm gonna see what happens if I just uh, go with the engines. What happens if I make a tog go really fast? Probably nothing good. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen first. Are we going to reach the end of the runway and everything explodes? Or are the wheels going to explode before that point? Because uh, they're rover wheels. Rover wheels don't like going this fast. Now, this, 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 this has kind of given me a thought, by the way. Um, yeah, we're actually going to make it to the end of the... Oh, no, things are exploding, and... <laughs> Two of the engines just literally flew off. <laughs> okay. So. Um. Actually, nobody died. Amazingly, nobody died. There we go. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. That was meant to happen. Yes. So, um... I had a thought, because I was, I was just trying this earlier, just seeing, you know, what I could maybe do on stream. And obviously we are going to try and get this into space. But, first, I want to see if we can get this thing to fly. I want to make a TOG that can fly. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I've saved this as a copy. And we're going to very quickly, and this is probably going to all go horribly wrong, but uh, we're going to empty all the oxidizer out of these um, out of these tanks, and then it's just liquid fuel. And we're going to have, in fact, I might even for this version, we might even just take out those two uh, saddle tanks, the two side tanks, because even with the best jet engines, even with the whiplash ramjets. We're not going to get a particularly good power to weight because uh, even without all the oxidizer, this is still... Oh boy, this is still over 100 tons. So um, we'll clip out those side tanks and that takes it down to 74 tons. There we go. That's looking much more reasonable. Uh, we can also get rid of the largely decorative fin. Um, the rest of it can stay though, the wheels and everything. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a TOG fly, or we're going to see if we can make a TOG fly. Probably it's just going to end up with more humongous, massive explosions, and it's going to be glorious. Uh, so aerodynamics, we want... Um, we could start off just trying the biggest single part wings that the game gives us, is the Fat 55s. Now the difficulty here is that I can't just hit radial symmetry, because it's going to clip inside... Yeah, it, 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 it does a weird thing. And this has been one of the reasons why it took so long to build the TOG, because I had to build each side by hand. I couldn't just rely on the usual symmetry options. So we're going to bring up center of mass and our aerodynamic overlay. And of course, it's a bit wonky at the moment because we've only got one wing. Oh, I just managed to pull the tail off, apparently. So I'll hit undo. So that is about there. So we want the center of lift and the center of mass to be in the same place, but not quite. Which is obviously, you know, some pro KSP aircraft building advice there. In the same place, but not quite. You want the center of mass to be slightly ahead of the center of lift, if I remember correctly. So question is, is this going to be enough lift with these wings? Because it might not be. The other thing that we might need to do is, if we pull those up a bit. Oh, that's a bit too high. It's, it's kind of annoying because I'm having to do each of these individually. They might not even be in the same place. This is almost certainly, like, even if this works, this is going to have some horrendous flight characteristics. There's no way this is going to be a thing that flies gracefully. But then it's a TOG. So that looks... Just in terms of that, that looks all right, but this might not be enough lifting surface. Anyway, we've got your control on a tail already, so we need some elevons. I'll put separate landing gear on as well, because I don't think these wheels make particularly good landing gear. Oh, this is this is literally just, will a TOG fly if you give it enough thrust, enough engines? So um, this might be... Again, trying to just guesswork it, put them in the right place. And hopefully, I'm just eyeballing it. Um, that looks kind of not right. <laughs> uh, let's pull that inboard slightly. 
maybe up a bit because it was kind of oh um oh yeah also i need to rotate it don't i that's why it's clipping through the wing at the back there on one side and not the other right that looks sort of okay and what happens if i put the wings on backwards um i don't know interesting things probably more explosions almost certainly i also need to make sure actually that we have our engines in the right staging because we start firing off the if we start firing off the lander engines which are in the turret it's going to try and lift off with the turret while it's still attached to the rest of the craft which will make things go boom almost certainly so uh, i guess a medium landing gear sort of on the nose somewhere ah, that looks fine probably Right, this is this is going to be test number one. Uh, we'll just make sure the landing gear is actually slightly uh, clipped up. Oh, also we need some <laughs> we need some control surfaces. Not 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 quite test number one yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. It actually needs some way to you know lift. So let's get some uh, elevons on this thing because we obviously need lift authority and roll authority. It's a real pity I can't get OBS to... Because if I could get OBS to record this at the same time uh, as it's streaming, which you can do, but you can't... Like, you can't do it at two different uh, frame rates. So, so it's a pity I can't get it to do that. And I'm having to use Bandicam instead. So if the, if the frame rate seems a bit janky, it's not you. It is actually the frame rate uh, being janky. Right, so that is needing to boil that way. We'll use this for uh, pitch. Because I think you want the inboard ones to use this for, for pitch. We don't have a proper tail on this, actually. I could put uh, some, some tail fins on the big space plane tail fin. Right, that's deploying in the right direction. And then we need some further ones for roll authority, which can be smaller ones, because uh, honestly, I don't think we're going to be doing any uh, particular massive acrobatics with this thing, but you never know. We might get inspired. Also, I want that to be, there we go, max pitch authority. I have a feeling we're going to need as much lift as we can get. I might even just stick on some canards or something. Right, and roll authority. So that's fine. And that needs to be inverted. So, right. In principle, we have all the right, you know, recipe ingredients for a complete disaster. I mean, for glorious success. Yes. For glorious success. It's a tog with wings. What can possibly go wrong? Okay, let's try this. <clears throat> Bear in mind, the pilots absolutely cannot see what's going on. So if, this, if we... Um... Whoa, that's some wobble. <laughs> that is some wobble. Okay, if we uh, look at the pilot view, this is what they get to look at. Yeah. So... Um... Godspeed, fair Kerbal Noughts. Let's hope this doesn't haul all horribly, massively go wrong. Oh, you know what I forgot? We need air intakes. <laughs> You'd think I'd never built a plane before. You'd think, but we need air intakes. Well, I almost tried to launch it without control surfaces, so having actually tried to launch it without air intakes is not so completely idiotic, right? Um... Yeah, okay, it's a bit idiotic. Right, what? Um, we're just going to do this the quick and dirty way. What, what are the radial ones? There we go. <clears throat> um, will it let me? It's trying to mirror that onto a part that doesn't even exist. That's weird. Okay, we're going to have to place these manually. Right, so that looks completely wonky, but it's fine. It's just, you know, don't judge the space talk. 
lest ye be judged by the space talk in return. As that old, well familiar philosophical saying from the Orient goes, yes. That is absolutely a thing, and you should not doubt me at all. It's probably for the best that the pilots can't see. Um, you might be right there, Uncommon. I think you might be right. <clears throat> <laughs> Maybe I should have put another wheel on there. Oh god, that wobbles so much. Jesus. Okay, this is not at all going to go wrong. Why would you think that? So... <laughs> Space tog away? Let's see, it might take a little while to accelerate. This is still a horrendously, horrendously heavy craft. We're still trying to fly a, a 70, nearly 80 ton plane. If I can find vessel stats, in fact, it'll tell me exactly how much. 76 tons. It's a 76 ton plane. Well, no, it's a flying tank. With a space tog in our arsenal, or even just a flying tog. Our enemies will fear us. I mean, I'd be afraid if I saw this thing flying towards me. Right. Can we lift? Do we need more lifting surface? We might need more lifting surface. Or it might be one of those planes where I've put the gear in slightly the wrong place. Although, if it was any further forward, um, I think bad things would happen. Are we going to go? Are we going to get lift? We're about to run out of runway. 105 meters a second. Um. Um. <laughs> Oh, come on, come on, up, up, come on, come on, <laughs> oh no, 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 um, okay, <laughs> and still, everybody lived, I can tell you now, that wasn't always the case in my testing, um, that could have gone better, but you know, I feel it could have gone worse, you know what we need, more engines, I feel like we could do this, you know, more engines and we could definitely do this. Right, I'm first off going to quickly bodge in some more, um, some more lifting surfaces. So I'll maybe just stick some, I'll literally just stick some canards at the back here. Right, that, that can go better. I have a good feeling about this, you guys. Right, so we'll designate that for pitch. Okay, I have a good feeling about it. What can possibly go wrong? Um, so, uh, yeah, we need some engine thingies. What's the best way to do this? Well, we could... Um, uh, aerodynamics, that's what I want. We could use some of the divertless supersonic intakes. If only it would properly go on the wings instead of it being a bit weird and putting things where there isn't a thing. Don't put a thing where there isn't a thing, KSP. Plus... Right, um, should we try about there? I don't know. So basically, I'm gonna just botch some more engines in. More thrust, more boosters. Uh, except that's, there we go. That's kind of clipped to the wings slightly oddly. In fact, you know what we'll do, which will be easier to copy paste onto another wing. Um, we'll use. Isn't there one that's? Ah, screw it. No, we'll just use the Mark II bicoupler. Just empty it of fuel and use that as a structural part. So what we can do is pull that down through the wing. Technically, it's attached to the, the top of the wing, but we don't care. Um, oh, that's still a bit wonky. So, we want two more engines on that. And basically, some intakes oh, on the front of it. I can scroll in. So, uh, aerodynamics... Uh, actually, we want, um, what am I looking for? Structural, probably. Bicoupler. This is going to look uh, a little, a little janky. 
but it's fine. Let's use a pair of the adjustable ramp intakes for, for flavor. So we're going to clip that under the other wing, or copy it under the other wing, and try and get it in more or less the same place. So that's kind of just under the edge of the uh, the other thing. Move it up a bit. Oh, also, <laughs> apparently those are upside down. Okay, so, um, extra engines. Has that done anything nasty to our center of... Maybe move the wings forward slightly. Okay, and I might want... I might want another bit of landing gear in the middle because honestly I think it's going to do bad things if we don't have a little bit more support. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. What can possibly go wrong? Let's actually move that forward slightly. Right. This, I mean, it's it's a beautiful example of aeronautical engineering that would... Uh, I've just noticed those wings are slightly uh, not the right height, are they? Or the same height. Um, yeah, that would make aeronautical engineers the world over literally weep at the sight of it. Because of its sheer beauty, of course. You know, th there's no other reason why they would break down in tears. It, it is just its sheer magnificent beauty. Okay, Space Tog Mark 2, or Mark 3, whatever. <laughs> what did I call it? It is the Space Tog, it's a Space Tog Mark 3, isn't it? Yes, that's what I christened it. Or just the Space Tog 3. Send it to the World of Warplanes developers. <laughs> I mean, uh, oh, no, no, okay, that wheel needs to be a little bit further back. We could try taking off like that, but it's just going to be lots of sparks. Lots of sparks and things going boom. So yeah, that needs to be just a tad further back. Um, that might be enough. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I think I was going to add some more elevons, but you know, I'm sure it'll be fine. And whoa, whoa, just, just, it just stays and uh are these not getting any fuel oh they're not getting any fuel how are they not getting any fuel okay um see now i've just made it heavier how come those aren't maybe i need to put some fuel in the wings actually or some fuel in those pods how much can they carry 180 not that much we'll put some fuel in the wings then because that will route straight through to the uh, those engines there. Apparently, it's not carrying through them from the main tanks, even though it's carrying through into those outer those outer ones. Well, we could always. Um, I don't know what this is going to do the center of mass, but if I pin that, what does that do? If I have that sort of half full of fuel, so that's still, you know, quite a lot of fuel. I just noticed though, the centre of mass and centre of lift aren't actually quite in the same place. Which is, uh, perhaps surprising that the aerodynamic properties of, of this vehicle are not entirely optimal but i'm sure it's nothing we can't fix also elevons more elevons we must have more elevons all of the elevons it's the plane equivalent of more boosters or something <laughs> this is so very very uh like even by my standards <laughs> this is the clutch to end all clutches 
I mean, I did try and turn a 200 ton plane into a space plane and somehow it didn't work, surprisingly. Um, but, you know, if we can make a TOG fly, well, then it'll have been worth it. Of course, we are going to get this into space as well. That That's the main goal here, is, is not just... Um, it's not just uh, making this fly, it's actually getting it into space. Whoop. Right, so let's give this another go. We've got fuel in all engines, maximum thrust. God, that's magnificent. Even just looking at it racing down the runway with the jet engines. That is absolutely magnificent. The best of British engineering. Right. Oh, we're going faster already. So the extra four engines are absolutely helping. We're still carrying oxidizer. Oh, it'll be in the uh, the turret, the lander. Right. Do we have lift? Oh wait. Half the turret, the turret, half the control surfaces are. Uh, going the wrong way. Well, <laughs> look at that. So graceful. So graceful and so not climbing at all. Um. <laughs> Welp. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. Even the explosions are amazing. Okay. So... Maybe we need more lifting surface. And I'm going to be incredibly quick and dirty and just absolutely stick more wings on it, the, the existing big wings. So uh, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. This is all part of the testing process. It is all the explosions and the screams of terror and uh, so forth. So if I... Um how am I even going to do that? What other wing parts are available that are big? Oh. Ah, we'll just cheat and use some more of these. And, uh, I don't know. Stick them slightly above the main ones or something. What if I... We'll lower those a bit. If I lower that to say there. And then these uh these 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 auxiliary wings can sort of sit like there maybe. Also, hey Hector. We're doing unspeakable things to the tog. We. I'm doing unspeakable things to the top. Or, or possibly glorious things. So we've basically doubled the, the wing area. Um, that, of course, is going to have... Uh, completely wonkified, which is definitely a word. The, uh, the landing gear. We might actually need bigger landing gear there. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Make it a biplane. That would actually be kind of appropriate, wouldn't it? We could, um, hmm, would that kind of, would they fit if we move them forward like that? That sort of looks like a biplane, right? We could put some struts on the, the, the ends of the wings. There you go. <laughs> Totally a biplane. It's a futuristic TOG biplane. Such as the world has never seen. Probably for a very, very good reason. Uh, oh, I know what I could do as well, which would also further reduce the weight. If we take all that monoprop out that we're carrying on this thing, which is just, you know, very useful in space, but not so much when you're trying to get it to fly. Oh, clicked on the wrong. Oh, why won't you let me click the... Ah, 
the interface in KSP sometimes it's worse than World of Warships. <laughs> it uh, yeah, it it gets a bit hung up with the thing that you're actually trying to click on. All right, that one's empty. In fact, we could just pull out those tanks entirely. Is there another one? Don't think so. Don't you those little engines? Ah, yes, there's one more. Right, so that's more weight savings. So, even more wings, which just means even more awesome, of course. Um, let's centre undercar undercarriage, which is probably what the Germans call it, I don't know. Undercarriage, even. And I might actually pull that back a little bit. Let's see how it handles. So, a little bit more weight, but we've made some weight savings as well. Stuff we just don't need. I was a little bit tempted to call this the Space Battleship Togato, but I'm not entirely sure that works. But, you know, then it would have its own theme tune, kind of. I just need to hire, like, a, a choir to actually... Uh, no, no, once again. Okay, we really do need that, that middle extra bit of landing gear. Okay, yes, that turns out to be entirely vital. But that's a very quick fix. And then, once again, explosions and hilarity. Although I'm not sure the test crew would see it that way. If I pull that um, slightly back of, of about the same place, actually, we don't want it too much further back. So that can interfere with your ability to, yeah. Right, okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Wobbling around, but it hasn't fallen on its ass at the first hurdle. Right, let's get the engines lit. Maximum throttle, we can do it, I want to believe. How much weight have we even trimmed off this? Let's get the vessel info panel up again. Oh, uh, we're actually a little heavier than our very first attempt, which was like 76 tons, but we've added extra engines and we've added, you know, wings and things. So it's heavier, but it's got more boost. And it's not as heavy as it, it could be. And I've still forgotten to fix that. Right. Come on! Why isn't that... Wait. Oh, are those ones going the wrong way? Maybe. Come on! It, it looks like it should be going fast enough. We have got gimbal authority, but it just... It, it maybe doesn't quite have particularly good dynamic properties. Oh god, it looks so good when it goes into the... Like, the, the way it all peels apart like that, though. That's amazing. I don't know! I don't know! Maybe we just need more thrust. Maybe we need some more lift on the uh, on the front end. We're only going to have one or two more attempts, by the way. Um, the, uh, the the getting of this into space is the the main thrust of the the evening's entertainment. So uh, I don't want to spend too long on on this this part alone. Right, um, that needs to be... Right, add more... Even more pitch authority! You can never go wrong with too much pitch authority unless you've got far too much pitch authority and it all goes wrong. Um, 
just have those auto strutted as well. Right, I, I've, I've done something weird with these flaps, so... Right, that looks like it's fine. It's weird, it, there's, I think there's some kind of bug with these, um, these large flaps. Because they can appear absolutely fine. And I'm not using mods, by the way. They can appear absolutely fine in the vehicle assembly. Or the space plane hangar, as the case may be. And then you go to... Um, you go to, to actually take off, and suddenly they're all moving in different directions than each other. So I think there is something wrong with that. Some kind of bug. But I haven't been able to pin down exactly what the errant behavior is. Why it... You know, what the circumstances are for it doing... Um things. Surely such large wings being so close together would negate the whole fundamentals of lift. Well, you see, Brett, that would be true if Kerbal Space Program was remotely realistic, but it has a somewhat simplified uh, uh, flight calculation. Uh, or aerodynamic calculation. out there called um, Ferrum Aerospace which aims to be available for the latest version so uh, yes it does actually change how you have to design your planes compared to the, the stock aerodynamic model so how yeah see the flaps in the garage were going the same way but in this in this case they're not going the right way at all so that Now they're going, even though I'm changing that, that's basically ignoring what I'm changing it to. So we need to like, do it the other way you can do it instead of just minus 150. Yeah, there is some kind of bug with these, um, these control surfaces. Anyway, once more. It might just be that it needs an absolutely monstrous amount of wing surface. Or just even more engines. It maybe just needs more thrust. Although this does seem like a decent amount of thrust that I'm getting off this thing. Like the speeds we're getting to on the runway are more than sufficient for flight. It's just, you know, it's a- Whoa! Oh, hallelujah! Oh my god! It flies! Wow! We did it! We did it, Reddit! That's amazing! It actually flies! My god, I'm a genius! Well, I'm something. That is amazing! I love KSP, by the way, because you can do absolutely stupid shit like this, and it's fantastic. Oh god, that is so good! Fly, my little dog, fly! Right, um... Okay, so, we have established the principle, a TOG can fly, but we need to go further, and farther, and faster. Much, much faster. Although first we're going to try and land the TOG. What all the cruising speed is. We're, uh, we're getting up to 200 bees a second, I think we can do it. Dear God, this is amazing. This is so amazing, I love this. I love the space dog. Right, so, um, okay. Now we have to somehow bring this thing down to the ground. And you can... Uh, this actually rolls. It's not bad. We've got so much, uh... We've got so much pitch authority, though, that I have to be a little bit careful, actually. Right, oh god, we're losing so much speed in this turn. Okay, come on. Come on, baby. Come on. You can do it. I also apparently missed some oxidizer somewhere. Oh, I know where I missed some oxidizer. It's fine. Land the tog on water. I don't. I don't know if that would be possible, but we're going to try. You know what? Screw it. We're going to try. Land the tog on the water. Fine. So we'll we'll, we'll go for a patch of you know where we're not going to crash into the coastline. 
This is amazing. Imagine what we could have done in World War II if we'd had these. We'd have won the war by, you know, January 1941. Right, so we're going to throttle down. I'm very bad at landings in KSP, by the way. Landing planes, anyway. Bear in mind, we don't have any air brakes. We don't have any thrust reversers on these particular these particular engines. Uh, we've basically just got, you know, the aerodynamic qualities of the TOG to slow us down. So we're slowly sinking. We're down to about 150 meters off the deck. And uh, it's probably going to all go pear-shaped, but... We actually need to keep enough thrust so that we can uh, keep our attitude up high enough. Right, so we're, we're relatively stable. We're sinking down slightly. We're not stalling out. We're below 100 meters a second. Oh, okay, we're pitching down. Hello. And there's the water and a textbook landing. Look at that. Perfect. And once again, everybody lives. <laughs> I wonder if we can actually flip this thing over. This this is a separate, like the crew module becomes a separate thing. Anyway, so there you go. A textbook tog landing on the water. Somebody did actually, um, uh, they did actually wonder if it would, uh, if it would float. So we're going to take the regular, the, the unwinged space tog. We're going to go and drive down to the shoreline and we're going to see how well the tog can float. Trinity, um, this is, um, it's SVE, so Scatterer gives a lot of the effects in SVE, but there are also different textures and things as well. So yeah, it's uh, stock visual enhancements. The only mods I've got on this build of KSP are literally Jack uh, Jack Meb, Meg Jeb even, and uh, and stock visual enhancements. I don't know why I'm throttling up. Actually, we're going to use the wheels. It's going to take a long time. We could, I could actually. Okay, let's try this. We're going to very cautiously, very very cautiously use the rocket engines, so we can get to the water quicker. So if we get up to about, okay, a little bit more, about 30 meters a second. Because I think you go too fast and it does absolutely lack of the wheels. <laughs> this is so, <laughs> just rocket tog. A rocket tog! Whoever thought a rocket tog was a good idea? Because I'll tell you what, it is, it's a fantastic idea. It's absolutely bloody amazing. Maybe we can go a bit faster. I'm not actually sure what the tolerance is on these wheels. Um, can we right click? What does it tell me? It's a pity there's no. Um, and this is something I don't. I'm not even sure you can get with mods necessarily. But it would be nice for for building boats and stuff in KSP. If there was some facility next to the water, so you didn't have to drive all the way down the runway to get to the water. So we'll actually. Um, Oh, we actually probably want to apply some brake at this point because we're going to go shooting off the end of the runway. We want to demount the runway at the side. And uh, approach the water gently. We don't want to go into the water at 30 metres a second. Although, okay, we're going at about 26. Having so many wheels actually makes for a really smooth ride. Whoa, that's not, uh, it's actually fishtailing a bit there. It's the new world of tanks physics. You get to do handbrake turns in a TOG. A TOG missile. I like the idea of that. Well, just anything, you know, TOGs and rockets. Sounds fantastic. Now, uh, once we get it on the water, the only means of propulsion is actually going to be the engine. So we'll have to use the, the throttle sparingly. And maybe I should have put some air brakes on it as well. <laughs> so this is what happens when Wheatley gets access to space projects. <laughs> it's
it's a pity. I mean, there are mods, and I was tempted to put some mods on when I was building this, but in the end, I just decided to keep it stock because it means whenever I go through different versions of KSP or you know new versions of KSP come out, I'll, I'll always be able to take out the space dog knowing that it's stock, not having to rely on mods. But uh, yeah, um, there are some mods that might be very useful. I don't think there's any that specifically give you caterpillar treads because that would be quite difficult for the KSB engine to handle, I think. But um, we're full brake, by the way, at the moment. <laughs> we're still like, actually accelerating down this slope. Um, this might be a little bit of an exciting entry into the water, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, yeah, there are ones that, that though, add kind of like hover engines or whatever you want to call them that, that take away the need for... Um, Oh, and, and she floats. She floats, gentlemen. We have a multi-purpose TOG. It can fly, it can float, and God willing, it can go to space. Let's try a little bit of thrust. It's rolling a little, however. She doesn't like the seas. Oh God, yes, no, we're rolling quite badly. I think it's the, the turret is, is making it top heavy. I wonder if we, if we ditch the turret. Okay, it's going to look a bit odd without the turret, but if we ditch the turret, which is going to float gently away in principle, can we right ourselves? I'm not sure. I mean, it doesn't look right without the turret, but the turret was adding the weight that was making it flip over, basically. Let's add some more thrust. Now, even with the vectoring, we can't actually flip this over. We could be an upside down tog. We're 100% a tog marine right now, but getting it to flip over the right way is going to prove a little bit tricky. Partly it's the weight of the fuel tanks, and I think maybe it's the fin, and also uh, the water resistance on the fin is probably preventing us from turning over. Maximum speed, let's see how fast our upside down tog ship can go. It's interesting to note, by the way, on KSP that jet engines and rockets work just fine underwater. So, uh, about 27 meters a second. That's actually not too bad, considering we're in an upside down floating tog. So, um, there we go. The multi-purpose tog is the Swiss army knife of tanks. The tail is now the rudder. That's true. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that's a separate thing save for the space plane hangar. We're going to go into the VAB, and we're going to get this TOG into space. How much is that in knots? Who knows? The real TOG does 13 kilometers an hour on tarmac. Well, I think we can safely say we've improved on that. God, I love this game. I really do. You can think of stupid things and then do them, and it's magnificent. So, we're going to open, and this is one of the... I think the first time I made the TOG, you couldn't even do this. You had to manually uh, copy stuff over. Right, so we've got our plain version and we've got the, the SPH version. This, this, by the way, this is all career mode. This is going to cost me actual funds. So, what we've got, we've got our TOG in the, in the uh, space plane, not the space plane hangar, we're in the uh, thingy hangar now. Somehow, we're going to have to get this thing into space. Now, I've got a thought. At the moment, let's just flip it around that way. These vector engines, now, they're very powerful. And they're actually throttled, uh, they're, they're thrust limited down to 45% at the moment. But potentially, much like the space shuttle, I could absolutely open those up. And we'll bring up the delta V thing, because that'll tell me my thrust to weight. So at the moment, the thrust to weight of the TOG is just over 1. That's at 45%. Thrust limiter. So, what I could do is we could have some booster engines, and and this is what I basically did when I was launching the original space tog, 
is strap a bunch of stuff to the sides and what I'll have access to these days, which I didn't the first time around, is these vector engines with their insane gimbaling range. And hopefully that will mean the fact that we have this massive unaerodynamic turret slapped on one side but not on the other. Hopefully that will mean that won't matter. Because in the original TOG, what I had to do, the original space TOG, I had to put a turret on both sides and it looked a bit weird, but it was literally the only way I could get it into space because of the, uh, the asymmetric um, drag. So my thought is if we're going to do this, I want these engines to be firing at the same time as whatever booster engines I have on the outside. So we're going to need to somehow get um, staging into uh, into there. So let's first unshackle the vector engines. Okay, so that gives me a thrust to weight ratio just with the internal power of the TOG. It gives me uh, two point two two point three even which is pretty damn good and we also have delta v of uh just about 2600 vacuum delta v figure so uh that we want to try and save as much as that as we can for actually getting uh, for once we're in space because we can go to the moon we can go to minmus and then we can send the lander around various places so um yeah hopefully we can find a way to preserve as much as that as possible so we're gonna i think what i'm gonna do uh, my idea is i'm gonna slap a big orange fuel tank or you know fuel tanks on this side and this side and then we have something on the belly as well that's maybe got a couple of extra vector engines and so what will happen is we'll ditch the side fuel tanks first and then we'll have the belly fuel tank with vector engines and then this thing with vector engines because the vector engines are really powerful they're also insanely insanely expensive but i've got about seven million in funds on this career uh, so you know it's all been leading up to this it's all been leading up to the glorious launch of the space tog one thing i actually might want to stick on um is i need well, I've got that docking port there. That might actually just do on its own. But basically, I want to be able to refuel this thing when it's in space. It's going to be a reusable space tog. So, uh, first off, coupling. And again, we're going to have the same trouble we had in... Because uh, cause we've got this odd construction. It's going to be a lot of doing it by eyeball rather than doing it in a more sensible way. So I'm going to have to use the structural panels to try and make sure that things line up properly. We're also going to need a metric butt-ton of struts. All of the struts. Uh, so... Maybe... Like... A pair of orange tanks at the side... And then I could just cheat and clip them inside each other. Um, that's obviously going to have to be strutted. Uh, that's fine. And basically we want the same thing on the other side. I'm going to use the part thingy to pull that down so it's in the right place. So that... That's still left us with a thrust to weight of over one. Which is a bit nuts. But we are going to add more engines. So it's not just going to be this. So aerodynamics. Nose cone on each. So these outboard ones are just going to be fuel tanks. Is my plan. And then we have a bigger fuel tank here. And then a butt ton more of these. Well, not a butt ton but a couple more vectors and uh we'll see how much this ends up costing probably not as much as a million credits but you never know it might get that high uh so that also needs to be okay that auto strutting is fine uh that's fine um in principle this should naturally fall away without needing any separatrons but you know we might 
we might. We almost certainly will have to do multiple launches before we get a configuration that will actually work. You like to think it would make it into, into space just fine with the original Leyland bus engines. <laughs> I mean, you know, British Leyland was OP, Brett. In fact, it wasn't even British Leyland. It was just Leyland at that point, wasn't it? Um, so you're probably correct. You're probably correct. I'm sure that would have worked just fine. Uh, where are we looking? Coupling. So. Uh, we don't actually know how much fuel we're going to have available yet. I might just do one of these really huge tanks. This is doing awful things to the, the center of, uh, what's the aerodynamics like? I don't even know. Right, um, I should also, where are we? Actuation toggles. We toggle on roll authority for these engines. We're going to need the maximum possible authority that we can have. Authoritar. Okay, so. Uh, do we even have a conical tank that we could... A uh, small one, but I don't think we have a, a big, big one. No. Those fit the, uh, the Mark III parts. So, yeah. Um... Right, so the principle is the fuel's going to flow from those outer ones through this and then into the internal tog tanks. Although I'm trying to get the right... There we go, part selected. I want that a bit further down, I think. That should do. Right, so... The question is how many... Oh, that's the wrong symmetry. Maybe another four? 1.97? Of course, the more engines we add, the more fuel hungry this is going to get. Um, okay. I really do like the auto strut feature. It's so very useful. All right, fuel lines. Um, once I get the fuel lines hooked up, Mechjeb then should go, oh, that's what you're trying to do. We should get some correct fuel figures. So that goes from there to there. That goes from there to there. Okay, we're approaching 4,000 delta V, and then that goes... Okay, this is the tricky one. We somehow have got to get a fuel... Fuel line, there we go, to go in there. So that's saying 3,900, but I think that might not be clipping to the right fuel tank. Yeah, this is going to be a bit tricky, isn't it? Somebody put a bunch of wheels in the way. Who on earth did that? I'd, I'd quite like to do this without having to steal a panel. Um... Internally. No, that's not what I wanted to do, KSP. Come on, there we go. Uh, yeah, we need to... Can we pull those tanks down a bit? I think it's at the, the kind of stage where there's there's enough of a part count that it's starting to... Uh, if I pull those down to about there... Oh, it should then give... No, that's... that. I can attach it to one of the saddle tanks. The internal saddle tank's fine. But it's not quite wanting to attach where I want it to attach to. So what we're going to do is we're going to bodge it and put an extra fuel tank in at the top. And that might... I mean, it gives more fuel as well, which is kind of useful. Why 
Why doesn't that want to... It'll attach to those, but it won't attach to that. Oh, no, there we go. It's done it. Right, so, 4004 Delta V. The TWR of 1.87. Um, now, what I could do... We're just trying different configurations here. This bit might take a while. 1.85. Does that actually help? Not really. <laughs> okay. Um... These side tanks could be bigger fuel tanks. Because thrust isn't really an issue, not when we've got these vectors available. We can just add as many vectors as we need, essentially. Well, I say that, you know, the more vectors we add, the less delta V we have. It's finding that balance and getting enough delta V, because at the moment we don't have enough delta V. Uh, also, we don't have it staged correctly, so that was also going to be... This is actually not going to be the correct delta V figure. So we're going to want... That one and that one in their own stage. Um, that, that's the lander stage, so that's fine. Right, that stage is... Okay. No, that's the wrong way. That way. So, now it says we have 4800 Delta V. But that includes the delta V that we'll have once we're in orbit. So I, I kind of, I still want more delta V than that, essentially. We need more delta V. So, maybe we could increase the amount we have in these saddle tanks. Is that going to add much? Not that much. So we might want those saddle tanks to be bigger. So what's the... Can we just do some more of those? I could do. Okay, let's just try that. We need bigger. We need more. We need more. We have the technology and also the funds. Which is not the original catchphrase, so I kind of ruined it there slightly. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm saying. If I try some Mark III parts, maybe. So two of those would have been about 7,000. How about if we have... No. Oh, that could, that could actually kind of work if we have that wait that apparently only wants to what if I want to attach it that way no those only those are very specific about which surface they'll let you attach it to so I'm gonna have to do it with the no radial snap on and I <laughs> clicked the wrong thing yeah sometimes it's a bit I think once you start getting past a certain part count it, it starts getting a little finickety like the UI doesn't keep up with you all that well like World of Warships oh, I've made that joke already <laughs> I've done it again I didn't want to switch to angle snap and oh my goodness sake Kerbal Kerbal why Kerbal why you do this right just gonna hammer the right key we've definitely pressed the right key there we go right we want the yeah it's actually it takes several key presses before it'll register that's why I'm being too quick for it basically okay so If I essentially have this whacking great big behemoth of a fuel tank on the side. And we're also going to need to, there we go. 
Do a bit of finagling. I think that's attached to the separator. Yeah, it should be. Okay. This is a lot of fuel. This is probably the most stupidly big launcher I've ever tried to uh, to uh, to use for something. I do kind of I like building stuff in the SPH is a little bit nicer actually because you you've got some uh, camera controls in particular that you just don't have in the uh, in the VAB. So I'm just trying to make sure these are more or less in the... Oh, that's the wrong part I moved there. That these are place. Because, um, yeah. What is the part count? I think it's struggling a bit. 332 parts. Okay. Yeah, no wonder it is struggling a bit. It's a fairly hefty part count. The frame rate on takeoff is probably going to be rather diabolical. But we'll come to that when we come to that. Uh, anyway, so... Fuel lines once it's caught up with me, okay. The staging itself is still correct. So, um... Still claiming only 4,800. Maybe it's actually not that much extra fuel, even though it's the bigger parts. Hang on, if we got a... No, that's not what I wanted, KSB. I'm having to be patient here. I've got to wait between clicks. Because it really is now taking just a little while. Of course, the alternative, or the alternative, it isn't even an alternative, but we could just add extra bits around the outside, like solid fuel boosters or whatever. Try and effectively increase the delta V. So that's nearly 5,000 delta V. Uh, there's no proper, like, actual aero nose cones for those Mark, part, uh, Mark II parts. So you have to slightly bodge it with... Uh, there we go. This is a it's a cathedral to ridiculousness or something, I don't know. Right, so let's make sure we're getting those auto strutted. I hope this doesn't just, you know, break the the launch pad. It shouldn't do, because the launch pad is fully upgraded. But this is going to be fairly heavy. 461 tons. So, um, initial thrust, the initial TWR is going to be 1.7, 1 1 nearly 1.8, which is not bad. And it will shoot up after we ditch the saddle tanks, which actually won't even take that long. Um, I'm kind of minded to maybe stick on an SRB or two, just to give that extra bit of oomph. We stick. And this is this is just this is just gonna be the world's wonkiest design. On the other hand, maybe Elon Musk is watching right now and going, my god, this man's a genius. I must build this thing at once. What's the biggest SRB that we have? I don't think it's the thumper. I think it might be the kickback. So yeah, I'm just saying, if you see SpaceX suddenly start work on something that looks suspiciously like a TOG, you're welcome. Um, right, if we move that up there. There's a little trick that, uh, that somebody pointed out on, uh, I think it was probably the subreddit, where if you have the, uh, the parts attached fairly high up, um, it, uh, it kind of naturally separates. Right, so where's that separator? That's that there. 
Okay, in theory that staging should be correct. And we're going to try this. We are um, absolutely going to try this. Actually, that might need to be... There, okay. Um, yeah, right, we need all the launch clamps in the world. All of them. Because uh, <laughs> this is probably one of the heaviest things I've ever tried to to have take off. But you know, we got the original space dog into space. It just took a while. So, um, oh, one last nose cone. Because it won't be it won't be aerodynamic if we don't have a nose cone. Okay, um, flight test number one. I suppose sure we have a full crew on board so we can maximize the casualties. I mean, um, no, no, I know what I mean. <laughs> I know exactly what I mean. Okay. Let's do it. Let's launch this bad boy. Uh, there is one thing, actually. Uh, we're going to set up, before I do this, we're going to uh, um, get the abort action group actually uh, tied to various things. So the first, if we want to abort, what we're going to do is... No, not the structural panel. I want the... There we go. We have to decouple that. We have to decouple that. I don't know if this is going to work if it just like all pops off at once, but anyway, I'm going to decouple that. We got to activate the SRB escape thrusters. So you know this this has got all the mod cons. It's got a crew escape system. And we'll have it deploy the radial drogue shoots. And I think there's only two of those. And then we can deploy the... Uh, well, we'll leave the other shoots alone. Anyway, so in theory, we have an abort sequence that we can make use of. And it won't all go horribly wrong, in theory. See you, Brett. In theory, this will all be going up on YouTube in glorious 720p. In theory. I think... I, I have a, sus a suspicion that uh, Bandicam might cut out bits here and there when it's it's loading... Right. Um, yeah, when it's loading from, from one thing to the other. So, nothing's immediately exploded, which is a good sign. Uh, oh, also we want the Delta V... Uh, where are we? Delta V stats and the Ascent Guidance Panel. Right, so... Okay! What can possibly go wrong? What can possibly go wrong? We don't even have any fins on this, actually. Maybe I should have put some big whopping tail fins on it. So, uh, stop at... Oh, having been so careful about my staging, I didn't then put the, uh, the, uh, the things in the right place. So, actually, we'll dump them in there. That's what I usually do. So, um, we don't want it to progress beyond stage six. Okay. Uh, auto stage on. Limit AOA, we might need to do that. We'll actually just hit F5 and quick save. Okay, so. Are you braced? Are you ready? Prepare your butts because we are going to launch the space tog. So here we go. Five. Four. I don't know why I'm doing a countdown, but why not? Three, 
two, one. Space talk is go. Space talk is. Oh God, the humanity. Okay then. Space talk is crashing into the ground. <laughs> Well, I mean, the crew capsule survived just fine. <laughs> See? Perfect. It was perfect. It was completely perfect. I think I know what happened there. I think I know what happened. What I need to do is I need a, a, a redundant mech jeb, except it's not really going to be a redundant mech jeb. It was trying to control it as if it was upside down, and then that made it all go completely pear-shaped. So, what I need is a, a, is a right way up mech jeb that I can click on and say, control from here. And uh, that should do it, in theory. Everything else, the staging, should be perfect. Fingers crossed. It's it's proved remarkably safe for the crew, I have to say. Every single crash, even though I've just been reverting flights, every single crash has been survived by every crew member that's been aboard. So, 10 out of 10 for safety. You know, NASA would be proud, I'm sure. Hell, it's probably safer to be in the, in the original talk. Right, what do we say? Stage six. Um, control from here. Okay. Um, I guess we'll turn on corrective steering. And we'll see what happens this time. Okay. Are you ready? Are you holding on to your butts? Let's go. And we didn't fix the staging. Well. I was just testing you guys. I was just testing. Right, yes, we need to put that launch clamp staging in the correct place, because otherwise we're just going to be doing a static rotic, uh, rotic, uh, rocket test. <laughs> this takes so long to load in. <laughs> Man, this takes so long. Right, here we go. I don't know why I've got this single SRB here. It's just for luck. That's what it is. It's our lucky SRB. Oh, no, wait. I didn't tell it to control from the... Whoops. I'll get there eventually. That one was down to user error. And the previous one was down to user error as well. <laughs> but the design is sound. Absolutely. What can possibly be wrong with such a beautiful design such as this? Right, control from here. Okay. Engage autopilot. And... No, we're still flipping. Ha! Now, part of them... Now, that's interesting. Part of them are pointing not the right way. So there's something funky going on with our... Uh... <laughs> Look at that. There's something slightly funky going on there. Meanwhile, Jeb and the crew decide to just, you know, screw all this going to space malarkey. We're just going to go for a nice drive in the country. And there's a slightly beat up rover. Do 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 do. We're just gonna just gonna head back to space center. <laughs> yeah, that may not quite have gone as planned. Right, we're gonna have to figure out what's going on here. There's something funky going on with the engines. Hey, Sombra. Uh, 
Uh, right. Unlike control surfaces, I can't just figure out which way the engines are... Uh... I think the thing to do is just reattach all the engines. And... Hopefully, they will be lining up in essentially the correct place. If I can get it to, there we go, attach that. So that's two groups of two. They're all on the same stage. Okay. We might also add some fins. Just because, you know, this is a very large rocket and it oh, can't. Uh, why is it gone to radial symmetry? Don't know. Probably because it passed over a part that had radial symmetry when I was doing the uh, the other thing. I was kind of hoping this, you know, would be enough in terms of its vectoring capability to to compensate for the fact that we have a slightly ridiculous center of mass versus center of thrust maybe it's just all a horribly inherently flawed design but you know if we thought like that we wouldn't try and send a tog into space in the first place hmm maybe if i stuck like say a vector on the bottom of each of these tanks doesn't have too much of an impact on our overall um, thingy, delta V. Thingy being the scientific term, but I didn't want to dazzle everybody with the science. Um, then that might maybe do the trick. Maybe. So let's lower that down slightly. So that brings the center of thrust slightly over more that way. And maybe I just need to take off the SRB. Even though it is the lucky SRB. Because um, we want the center of thrust to be... Actually, where do we want the center of thrust to be? I don't quite know. Let's try that and see if it works. Once again, we're going to have to wait. <laughs> yeah, Bandicam for some reason isn't picking up these. So I'm going to have to do some creative editing when we're on these transition bits. Not quite sure what I'm going to do there. Okay, so here we go. Once again, extra engines. I removed the SRB, which potentially was fouling things up a little bit. Um, are they not quite... They might not actually be quite even, but it's fine. <laughs> Control from here... Although that theoretically should be centered. That's a thought. I wonder if we can have it control from. What would that do? Right, that centers it. So that. In theory, maybe. Might work, maybe. I sound so confident, right? It's a good thing the astronauts can't hear me. Uh, let's try to limit angle of attack as well. And... Once again... Okay, immediately this is more successful. I mean, it's, it's, um... It's not super stable. But it's not immediately crashed into the ground. I mean, it is still going to crash into the ground, but it's it's less of an immediate crashing than we had previously. So let's test out the abort. See if the abort works. Hooray! The abort has worked! As I knew it inevitably would. So the abort system works, I mean that's what we were testing this time, yes. That was our intent. We didn't actually want to try and launch the space dog. We just wanted to test the abort system. Yes. 
Yes. That's my claim and I'm sticking to it. So, um, yeah, that worked better, though. That worked better. Maybe. Maybe I could do with a tank that's just on the, the top of the tog, if that makes any sense. The only problem is, of course, I've got a bunch of stuff plus that fin. So that's why I hadn't stuck anything there before. Uh, so this is a bit... <laughs> this is a bit awkward. Also, wow, Sombra. Wow. That was dark. I'm not reading that out for the benefit of YouTube. Um, right, how do I do this? Good question. Okay, so. So. Um... Okay, right. Well, um, what I'm thinking is I could maybe... This is sticking parts on top of already existing parts. We could... Have bits that are kind of like here and here, if that makes any sense. That are also drop away tanks. So, you know, it's more Delta V. We're just adding more Delta V. It, it isn't that we're uh, correcting a horrible design flaw. But, you know, th there's no horrible design flaw. What are you talking about? It's it's perfect. We're just making it more perfect is what we're doing. Um, and more expensive. <laughs> we're already up to like half a million. Right. Okay, we want one of those. And... I mean, I could just clone those, but that would be utter overkill in terms of Delta V. Mind you, even something like that is utter overkill in terms of Delta V. Um, well, that's because we have the wrong modes. There we go. Uh, is that going to be kind of centered enough? I don't know. We might just be adding more parts uselessly at this stage. But you know what they say? More boosters. It's a staple of Kerbal Space Program. They say it for a reason. So... Um... We could actually have that easily be two. Uh, that's in the right stage. What stage is that in? I'm actually going to want that to be there. Um, actually, no, what am I doing? Right, get rid of that. Move that, say, way up there. And then we have a smaller bit of fuel tank underneath. Come on, up a bit further, there we go. With I mean more more of these vectors also means more control, basically. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. And then we have um I auto struck those. God, this is not doing good things to the part count, I'll tell you that. Where do I want? Structural, Kerberdyne adapter, and then aerodynamics. And the big nose cone. It's doing very, very bad things. It always kind of bugs me that those, you can get them to sit flush, but you've got to move them down manually. It doesn't quite sit flush. So,
You lost 155k damage game in your Amagi because your team was... No, no, see, Sombra, you just, you just have to admit. You just have to own up. And, and, you know, you have to be a big boy and you have to admit that it was all your fault. And that you just didn't, uh, you just didn't play well enough. You just, you know, you were just too much of a scrub. And your team valiantly tried to carry you, but they were just unequal to the task. Is that not really what happened? Come on now. You can, you can tell us. Okay. I don't know why it does that with the engines. It's slightly odd, but, uh, is that lining up correctly? So, that's still a, okay. I don't think that fuel line's in the right place. Come on, KSP. All right, that's actually put two in. And that's my phone making noises, so just ignore that. Because I'm a complete professional, as is obvious by what you can see on screen right now. Somebody who is unprofessional would not make such a beautiful, inspiring, magnificent creation such as this. Yes. Um, so basically, those are actually bigger than those. <laughs> We have so much thrust. Right, uh, what is six? Oh yeah, okay, right, okay. So, um, that I think actually needs to be there. Maybe we could, no, actually no, we do want it on that one. 6,000 meters a, de a second delta V, we're actually going to you know what, we're going to double up on these engines as well. We can afford to to lose a few meters a second delta V to get that extra bit of control. That extra bit of thrust. TWR still 2.21. These vectors are crazy good. And... I might actually move that down slightly. Okay, let's try this once again with even more boosters, TM. Any moment now. <laughs> I always get hopeful when I hear Chatterer kick in. There we go, right. Uh, oh, um, you know what we've got to do? We've got to put more launch clamps on. It just literally fell off the existing launch clamps. <laughs> Whoops. Right, um, well, I could try and launch it, but it is just going to bash into the launch clamps. So, more launch clamps! We forgot more launch clamps. Which idiot sent this thing to the pad without more launch clamps? Okay, so, we want one there, we want one there, it'll eventually place it. Hell, let's just stick an extra one there as well. Okay, so what should happen is these drop away, then these drop away, and then finally this drops away, but by that point hopefully we're in orbit, maybe? God willing? Tog willing? Serb willing? <laughs> right, uh... That... Did I auto-strut everything there? I think I auto-strut the big tanks, but you know, let's auto-strut the nose cones as well, because reasons! Also, I'm just going to get some more water, because, uh... This, this anticipation is making me very dry-mouthed. It's, it's all the adrenaline, you know, that's what it is. Well, I actually had time to do that before it uh, <laughs> before it loaded in. We do have rather a lot of parts now, though. Even if I wasn't running Bandicam, the frame rate would still be struggling just a tiny bit. So, oh, remember to there we go. Control from here. Okay. Do a quick save. And fingers crossed.
Oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, steady now, steady. <laughs> God, the aerodynamics of this are so bad. And we've got things exploding. Magnificent. I don't even know what I've exploded there. Well, we'll reach orbit in no time, I'm sure. Um, this, this, this maybe could be going bad. Should we try the abort system again? Let's see if we can climb free. Oh, we actually are slightly looking at the, the wrong... Oh, well, we had a slightly rough landing. But they survived. It's basically fine. It's basically fine. <laughs> there you go, see, they've landed. <laughs> and they're all okay and not at all traumatised. Yes. Is something still burning somewhere? God, look at this debris. So much. Oh, it's a structural panel. Okay. That's probably what I was focusing on. Um, we may have made a slight mess, but it's fine. Right, let's let's watch that again because I want to try and figure out what's going on here. I think it probably is just the the horrible aerodynamics. This might be like last time where I need to do a separate like multiple streams before I perfect it because that's what happened last time. But you know, we got it to fly, we got it to float. It's just now we have to do the other thing, the the more difficult thing. I wonder if I could somehow God, would this squeeze inside an aerodynamic fairing? Probably not. I don't think there's a, a, a fairing part big enough, to be honest. For the, for the tog. Right, so... If I severely limit the angle of attack... Got corrective steering turned on... Actually, that sometimes I've, I've noticed corrective steering seems to make it overcompensate. So let's try corrective steering not turn. No, it's it's definitely heavily. It, it, it kind of heavily skews off to one side and then it all just goes pear-shaped from there. And the vectors are doing a pretty good job, but they're not miracle workers. So yeah, I think it's... I don't know. We maybe need to get... I might need to go back to the drawing board. I, I mean, I think this basic idea is fine, but we need to get the centre of thrust lined up a lot better. It's somehow keeping it in the air, though. This is probably the most successful flight we've had yet. I'm not going to say it's successful, but, you know, things haven't exploded quite at this stage. We might even get as, get as far as the first stage separation. <laughs> this is a hell of a takeoff. More reaction wheels. We've also got uh, quite a lot of... We've got two of the big SAS wheels on there already. Wow, it's actually approaching something like stable flight. Amazingly. We probably just need to redistribute the thrust. But yeah, that's the power of the vectors. Right, we're dropping those tanks and then, yeah, it's all going pear-shaped. The power of the vectors is not enough to overcome the, uh, the aerodynamics. It just massively flips. I think it's burning off structural panels at the back there. Yeah, it is. It's when the vector range clips through the structural panels. It overheats them. And also, the, that internal tank is wobbling just a little bit. Still flying! 
We're still going. I mean, it's kind of going sideways at this point, but it is still going. <laughs> I think we might need to do some more flight testing on this. <laughs> and, whoa, yo, whoa, that's not good. Did we just lose some engines there? Oh, the fuel tank is kind of... Good lord, it's kind of hanging out the bottom of the tog. It's not supposed to be doing that. So, I mean, we're doing better than we were. We're definitely doing better than we were. But this is not going to space yet. In fact, now we're accelerating towards the ground. Still, we managed about three and a half thousand meters. I don't, actually, maybe a little under that, but still. And oh, oh, that's a bit flippy. I don't imagine the crew is really enjoying life right now. There you go, the external tanks. And now it's just the belly tank and the main tog engines. I think we need to strut that internal tank because that, that should not be clipping through the bottom of the tog like that. But yeah, these engines, I mean, in terms of their thrust to weight, in terms of their gimbaling range, these are the engines we want to use. Right. Um. I'm trying to... It's <laughs> so much to breathe. Uh, I was trying to, to toggle over to the... the uh, did the crew survive? Let's find out. There is so much debris. It's just a single solitary mech, Jeff. There's a bit of wing. It's not actually letting me look at that uh, debris over there. I'm not sure why. Yeah, it's just going between those three pieces. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think the crew survived that one. So, ha. Huh. I mean, that was better. That was better. So let's get that... Um... Let's get that strutted. Right, um, I think I'm actually... I mean, we're getting towards two hours and I'm... I'm, in, I'm I was thinking of doing the stream at about two hours anyway. So what I'm going to do... I don't think we're going to get the space tog uh, the, the space tog launched properly, but we're going to we're going to run a little a simulation. That's what I'm going to call it. We're going to run a little engineering simulation, and we'll see what the tog is like once it's actually in space. So, uh, if I just click there and tell it we want that. Just stick a bunch of crew in, why not? This has been fun though. This has been a hell of a lot of fun. I've definitely enjoyed this. We're going to do another Space Tog stream at some point and we'll get it into space. Except I think last time it took three streams to get it into space. But... It's doable! With these engines, I feel sure it's doable. We've made so much progress. So, uh, we're going to ditch that. And we're just going to hit Alt-12 and hopefully it won't stop Bandicam. Right, uh, set orbit. So we'll set it in orbit around, say... Should we have somewhere exotic? I've never actually been. I usually just use the, the Mun or Minmus. Um, I don't know half the... Uh, I guess Moho. Because I think Moho's small and rocky. It also amuses me that it, it shows up the space tog as being like a... 
wow, that's super jittery. As uh, being a plane symbol. It's just decided that the space talk is a plane. So... It flies. Let's let let's let's just do a little maneuvering because I, I encountered an issue with the TOG, and this is why I eventually went with the vector engines. Um, what was happening is because the center of the mass and the center of thrust weren't lining up very well, it would kick up and start spinning wildly. So the vectors counteract that quite nicely. Doesn't it look magnificent though? But if I press that key, I can even make the wheels start going round in orbit because that makes sense um, so uh, let's just heck let's just do it the old fashioned way let's just pull in the periapsis a lot closer until it execute next node I'll make sure the engines are actually turned on as well. It's aerodynamically unstable like the Eurofighter Typhoon. Exactly! It's a deliberate design choice that's meant to reflect the capabilities of modern controlled systems or something. I don't know. Just making this up as I go along. So that should auto warp. And then I'll show off the lander in action. I'm doing this because I did this on an earlier stream, but, you know, this is for the benefit of YouTube, because YouTube, those people that uh, that, that watched my, uh, it's like four hour stream or something like that. Not everybody watched it. And of course it was in fuzzy 480p, as opposed to super crisp tw uh, 720p. So yeah, it, it absolutely, it wants to, to kick rather badly. But the uh, the vectors hold it in place. But even so, it does. When you first start firing, it does have that little kick to it. So there we are. And oh, hello. <laughs> no, what? I want you to circularize. Okay, there we go. That created a node that was going to crash us into the planet for some reason. So I'm just taking it into a lower orbit and then, uh, yeah. I could have just used the cheat menu, actually, but I, would, I wanted to show the engines off in space. Space, the final TOG frontier. It does look magnificent, though. I'm so pleased with this. The one thing I wish I maybe had done is put like some of the, the, the details on the back. I mean, the big cooling panel, and I haven't showed this off yet actually, that's there for a reason. But the big cooling panel, uh, which I will deploy when I'm able to. I figured, you know, even if the engines fail, even if they run out of fuel, they've got a space sail. It's a solar sail tog, yes. I think there are actually mods that add solar sail stuff. At least I would be extremely surprised if there wasn't. Anyway, so there you go, it's the solar sail tog. So, we'll whip round to the day side and... I'm just gonna cheat and use the landing guidance because I suck at landings. I tend to crash things into things very fast and the crew doesn't like it very much. So Moho, I've never technically been to Moho before, but you know, none of this, this is all, you know, not technically happening. This is me just showing off the, the lander. So, uh, transfer crew, because obviously we're going to want some crew. Let's put Jeb and Bill in there, because why not? Actually, we could, uh, who's, who's else on board? Let's take scientist Bob. I think Bob's the scientist. So, uh, 
that's easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to undock and hey presto. Once I switch to the correct part. Oh, wrong way. So yes, the turret is also a little lander. So we'll get that pointing prograde. Uh, we might be slightly about to whack the... Uh... It's fine. That was completely meant to happen. God, that part count. It's just every so often you'll have it, this little pause while it's figuring out what's going on with the physics. So, um... As you can see, we've got our science experiments. We've got a 17-pounder gun. Just, just go with me here for shooting the natives if they prove to be unruly. And uh, it's also got 1,600, nearly 1,700 meters a second delta V. So we'll just land uh, somewhere relatively flat. Activate the engines. Click land on target. And the nice thing with, I mean, I wasn't, I was considering not having anything to, you know, represent the gun, but then I decided actually the girder, you can kind of see through it. So it doesn't obstruct the vision that much. It looks a bit weird, but you know. Apparently we've got to go all the way around before it wants to land where I want it to land. Okay. <laughs> Only one engine. This has actually got three engines, Nikos. It's got three of these little twitch engines. As you can see, all the fuel tanks are clipped inside there. We've also got... I should actually turn off RCS, because that's the RCS you'd use for... Well, actually, it doesn't matter. We're not going to bother with the redocking. You know, taking off and redocking. It can do that. The 40 monoprop is enough for that, but... Uh, yes. Right, hopefully this doesn't take too long. In theory, it should auto-warp past the boring bits. In theory, uh, yes. Um, do I have to fast forward myself? Maybe. Yeah, sometimes with a landing thing, Mechjeb's not very good at um, We might just have to force it. And hope that it doesn't pick the side of a mountain or something. Right, here we go. Do orbit burn. I tried various configurations, like this alone, I don't even know how many hours I spent on this lander. You know, the turret, before I uh, found something I was happy with. I originally had a Clampatron Senior, which took up basically the entirety of the, the underside of the lander can. Uh, but then I was struggling to fit in the engines. And it also meant that I'd have no way of, of um, replenishing the fuel. Even though replenishing the fuel would be an absolute fiddly bastard in this thing. But you could, in theory, do it with patience. You just have to zoom all the way in and right click on the relevant tanks there's still no tool in ksp like a central fuel management tool and there should be and there was a mod for it but then it stopped being um kept updated basically so yeah and the mod itself wasn't perfect either but it was better than the, the default option of, of having to select all the tanks you want we might just have to force it Jedi 2016. <laughs> well, obviously I was using force as a verb there. Have you seen the news, by the way? The the charity commission in the UK has decided that Jediism isn't an official religion. Even though it's the seventh most popular religion in terms of people putting it down on the census form in the UK. So, yeah. Technically not a religion. Boo, is all I can say. Boo, what do they know? Anyhow, I wonder if we roll this a bit, we can... 
Enjoy the view. So this is Moho. Never been to Moho. Not properly. It was my first time even just cheating and doing it with the uh, the thingy menu. One of the mods I would like, by the way, there's, there are various mods that add... I guess there isn't much in this one. Wow, there's not a lot in this lander can at all. You've literally just got the uh, the nav ball. What is that? Ultimator and a... Uh, a speed thingy? And you don't really need that because you've got the speed indicator there as well. This actually has almost less than the Mark 1 lander can. But uh, there's mods that add um, screens. Actual functional screens. Because some of the the interiors have got dummy screens anyway, you know, they're just textures, uh, and it replaces those. But other stuff that doesn't already have screens, it adds screens to. Uh, raster prop monitor, there we go. So, yeah. This is taking a while. <laughs> Probably be faster if I could land it myself, but if I landed it myself, it would just be a smear of structural panels on the landscape. I love building the stuff! Actually trying to, you know, do the fiddly takeoffs and landings and dockings and rendezvouses, which is obviously the proper French way to render that as a, a plural word. Um, yeah, that part not I'm not so good at. So yeah. But yeah, I, I just I'm I'm quite pleased with the, the fact that I even had this th this thought of why not make the Tog turret actually do something? Because in the original Tog, it was purely decorative. There was basically nothing in there, apart from, I think, a, a reaction wheel. But, uh, uh, no, this, this is just, it's, I love when you can do stuff like this in KSP, and you can just go, oh, I'll just make this thing be an actual thing that does something. And in this case, the turret is the lander. And it's enough delta V in this thing to um, land and take off from the moon. It can land and take off from Minmus multiple times. Um, Moho I have no experience with, so it might be enough Delta V for landing, but it might not be enough Delta V for taking off from Moho. Because I really haven't gone beyond Kerbin and uh, uh, um, the Mun and Minmus. Although if you're watching the stream I did last time round, I'd, I've shown you the, uh, the stuff that I'm sending to Duna. I've got some probes on the way to Duna. Anyway, we're getting there. 33k above the surface. Burning away that velocity. This is a slightly bigger planet than I thought it was. But we still have enough TWR that it, it's not an issue. We're not going to just come smashing down into the surface. I also wondered if the... Well, this is something I hadn't tested. I wondered if the weight of the girder might offset the... Uh, like if it might unbalance... But these have actually got a bit of gimbal range themselves. And plus we've got RCS on this thing, so it's apparently a non-issue. Your team is losing against bots, Sombra. That, that is special. Um, I don't know what to say about that. There's another mod I'd quite like to, uh, to try, actually, that I never have. You've reminded me of it with that bots comment. Uh, BD Armoury. I think it's BD Armoury. Anyway, you can um, obviously put weapons on things, but it also, and I think it is that mod, it comes with um, like AI scripts for planes, so you can have your fighters fight against each other. You can have aircraft fight against each other. There's no atmosphere, yes, there's no, um, this is one of the airless planets. Um, Eve, which is supposed to be like Venus, has a very thick atmosphere. There's the gas giants. Duna has a thin atmosphere, as it's supposed to be Mars. And the rest of the bodies don't have one. Oh, actually, having said that, no, one of the other moons does. One of the moons is meant to be like Titan, and so they've given it um, a reasonably thick atmosphere. I can't remember which moon that is now. But yes, there is actually another moon with an atmosphere. Uh, one of the, the mod packs that's been um, quite popular recently, or it's been getting a lot of exposure, let's, let's put it that way, is the, is the Galileo Planets pack. And I've been a little bit tempted to try that, but it would essentially mean starting a new career mode. 
mean, if I do a modded build, I quite possibly will uh, once the mods all catch up with... What are we at now? 1.2.2? I think Galileo Planet Pack might well be one of the mods that I try. Hey, Grants Grunts. You're actually getting here towards the end of the stream. Um, we made a tog fly. We made a tog float. And we've made progress towards getting a tog to space. Uh, but th this is, at the moment, this is me cheating. I cheated to get the tog into space just so I could show off the turret lander in its final form. I'm kind of, like, that would that would make for a nice Ranzar cartoon, actually, if you have to... The turret suddenly grow legs and start scuttling off and doing its own thing. I don't know. The, uh, what's the guy's name? Dimitri Plugin or something like that. I'm sure he could, he could make that into an amusing idea. So we're nearly down. Uh, this, this is a bigger world than I thought it was. We've used up quite a lot of the Delta V actually landing this thing. I don't know if there'd be enough to get back into orbit and, uh, to rendezvous. So, um, yeah, the space tog is maybe going to be confined to the Kerbin, the immediate Kerbin system for, for now. I don't think we're going to be able to send it off gallivanting to Duna or, or further afield than that. Yes. The turret lander, it works rather nicely, I think. Does this game have the Orion Drive? Um, no, but there are almost certainly mods that do that. Sorry, key for, did I hotkey that? Uh, apparently not. So. There we go, Jeb posing with the Tog Turret Lander. Overall, I can say, great success. If only I didn't have to cheat to get here. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. I am very pleased with that overall. So, of course, none of this ever happened though. It was, in fact, entirely a simulation. So, um, yeah, someday we'll do it for real. Someday soon. So, um, as the uh, as the stream draws to a close, I think what I'll do, we'll end off with our probably most successful part of the stream so far, which was the flying tog. And I'll wrap up the stream there. We will literally fly off into the sunset. <laughs> yes, I like that idea. Well, maybe not the sunset. We'd have to get the time of day just right for that. Oh, sorry, Katrina. Although, uh, I have been recording this in Bandicam at the same time, but the reason, part of the reason I'm going to end it is because I'll have to go and do some editing and then it's going to take quite a long time to, to render. I think what I'll have to do, because Bandicam has been leaving gaps, I'm going to have to download the VOD for the audio and then match it up with Bandicam and then just put in some blank frames for the relevant bits. So it'll be 720p, it'll be better than we usually get. Anyway, let's have the space tog fly off into the not sunset. I'm genuinely surprised we got this thing flying so easily. Uh, double wings. Well, uh, Ektar said, build a TOG biplane and it, it kind of effectively is a TOG biplane. Okay, takeoff speed's about 88, 87 meters a second. So, yeah. We're just gonna have the TOG fly off magnificently. I'm turning the wrong way, aren't I? And, uh... I think we'll wrap things up. So, um... 
yeah, yeah, so easily solved, bro, so easily. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. This was a hell of a lot of fun to do. Um, I don't know how many hours the talk took me, but it's been so worth it. That was that was a lot of uh, that was a lot of fun, and I hope you found it fun as well. So this is going to appear on on YouTube. So keep an eye peeled if you uh, I've, I've turned up part way through. Hopefully it will turn up on YouTube anyway, and if not, you can always watch the fuzzy 480p vod on uh, on Twitch before it disappears. Thank you all for tuning in, for those that have. I, I, I don't know why I said that, because that then would maybe make it sound like I'm going to say something about those people that didn't tune in, but that wouldn't make any sense, so... Yeah, that right there is a sign that I probably need to go. Anyway, if you hit the follow button, thank you. Um, you can find links to all my other things below, YouTube and uh, Twitter and Facebook and so on. Um... I guess that's it, really. Tune in next time for more Space Dog. And wherever you are, I hope you have a good evening, and I hope to see you next time.